Unstoppable you, right? We are building brilliance. We make that conscious choice. I am a huge believer in the power of positivity and that we are all leaders. Every single one of us wakes up each and every morning with the opportunity to live and lead our best lives. So in what I call the empowered leadership model, we are all leaders of ourselves. Some of us have the honor of leading others and even fewer have the opportunity to lead leaders. So I train leaders across the globe. It is what brings me the greatest joy because leaders have such an impact. And each and every day when you choose to live and lead your best life, you create a life story that inspires others. And so I wanna support you in that journey and honor you in the quest to live a life of purpose and meaning and make a big difference in the world. So I'm going to share with you a strategy that we talked about this morning in Juice with Jay that was so powerful. I had to create a little micro training about it because this one thing, while there's many things that we stack in terms of our habits, this one thing can give you hours back each week to do all the other things that are on your to-do list that bring you tons of joy. For me, I wanna spend time running and playing with my daughter. She's young, she's precious, I don't wanna miss those moments. And so I want to get my work done as fast and furiously as possible. I want to be efficient and I want to execute with an ethic of excellence. That's a mouthful. Execute with an ethic of excellence. So think about the values that drive you and what you want your personal brand to be. For me, I've always told myself I will deliver extraordinary at or ahead of schedule. That's the promise I make to myself every day. So I want you to think about what is your promise? Because when you rise and raise that, what we call in high performance research, performance necessity. You will rise and discipline yourself to show up as that every single day. And then that's just how you roll, right? So you will be unstoppable. So let's talk about how to design your best day so that you can achieve more in less time. The more you do, the more you can do. So with that, let's dive in. I want you to put on your thinking cap and think about the roles and responsibilities you hold professionally. So get out your journal, open it up. Earlier in Juice with Jay, we talked about Marcus Buckingham's research on strengths and how he advises making a love it, loathe it list. So you might make a column in your journal of things you love and then things you loathe. And think about holistically all of the roles and responsibilities that you hold in your professional arena. What are the top priorities you are accountable for delivering and what tasks are recurring regularly that you complete on a weekly or monthly basis? With that, I'm gonna share a little bit about mine. I have the best job on the planet. I develop leaders across the globe. I nurture high performers and help people advance their careers. I also love working with parents and helping them parent with greater purpose and intention and joy and positivity and be, I like to call it, put some pep in your step, positive, encouraging parenting. So most of what I'm responsible for is conducting research to stay on the cutting edge of what we need to know. So that might look like, examining scholarly peer-reviewed research, consuming loads of books. Um, I'm a big fan of reading and actually physically highlighting. There's research that shows you retain more that way. So I'm old school. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't read blogs. I want things that are published, scholarly, and by the best and the brightest. And I combine all of those resources from the best and the brightest and creatively make a, a wonderful, joy-filled, personally meaningful training out of it, right? And that's what I'm primarily paid to do. Keep us on the cutting edge, up-level performance so that we can reach whatever goals we put in front of us. It's really fun. And so with that, I also have to manage scheduling and identifying when trainings are going to launch and who's going to be invited to what and managing my global uh, plan. And then there's budget aspects, right? I have to manage the budget well. I have to negotiate contracts with vendors. And then there's also an analytical side where I analyze who's been attending what, what are the topics of greatest interest, where are we trending, and then provide monthly reports um, 
to on capturing the progress that we're making. So that's my role in a nutshell. Are there other things as you think about your role? Yes, but I want you to think of like, what are the five biggest things? What are the things that take up the majority of your time? Then as you start to think, what is required of you to perform with an ethic of excellence? What do you have to do as the CEO of your desk, whether you run your own company or whether you are an employee or whether you are an entrepreneur or whether you're a student getting ready to graduate and enter the workforce, Think like a boss, right? I want you to own your day because you're, you're responsible for yourself and leading yourself. And that is a big responsibility and you have a lot more autonomy than you think. So take out your calendar for me. Mine's right here on my phone. So as you take out your calendar, I want you to look at it, look at it very closely and ask yourself, does it really reflect the most efficient, productive execution strategy you could possibly deploy? The answer is probably no, which is why we're all here. Um, if you're like me, this was your calendar, right? Totally designed by chance. People put meetings on. I used to always say, my, my calendar's up to date. Go ahead and schedule when you'd like. Well, if you think back to my role, what do I need? I need lots of pockets of quiet time to research, analyze information, and put it together really creatively. It's difficult to do that when you look at what my week looks like, right? I have an hour here, be creative for that hour, and then jump back to back in other meetings, or here's 30 minutes. It's very difficult to get deep into the consumption of research in 30 minute pockets or hour pockets here and there scattered across the week. But that's what we let ourselves do. We let our days be designed by chance. So I wanna propose a new idea that I learned thanks to Brendan Burchard. And that is to design your week by choice. Doesn't this just look better? I'm totally OCD, so this makes me feel like a big sense of relief. So you'll notice what I put in here intentionally is every morning, beginning with an Einstein hour, studying lights me up. And I'm not talking about the kind where your professors are telling you what to do or your teachers are telling you what to do. I'm talking about where you get to study something you love. That energy will fuel the rest of your day. Then I have, you know, sometimes I'm meeting with different leaders to hear their team's needs and to design in response to those needs. Other times there's other meetings I'm responsible for. But notice here, I've got plenty of meetings. They're all stacked up. I've organized, you can tell I have from basically nine to noon. So if you would like to meet with me, it's not just plunk yourself onto my calendar anymore. It's I'm available from nine to noon, Monday through Wednesday. Please let me know what time works best for you. Right? And then I own that schedule. I own my calendar. And then you'll also notice one to five on Mondays is primarily also for meetings. So Monday's my heavy meeting day. Tuesday, I start off heavy with meetings and then I transition into starting to develop training materials. Wednesday, I give myself an even larger chunk of time. You'll notice Thursday, that's my day. That is my day to be a rock star. I wake up fired up, I'm super excited and I, I crush it, that's my, that's my dream day. And then Fridays, you'll notice I allow myself to finish a little early. I wanna reward myself for starting strong, finishing stronger, that's something I commit to each week. And you'll notice there's something called weekly wins and strategic planning there. So that's something we've talked about on Juice with Jay also, to really pull out your phone, look through your camera roll, look through your calendar, look through the things you've created, whether that's a Word doc, a PowerPoint, a video, something you've done, a meeting you've led, an agenda you've created, an email you've sent, the things you did that really moved you forward, what were those big wins? We don't take time to celebrate them, but our energy goes where our attention, our energy flows where attention goes. So we wanna put our attention to the best of ourselves and give space in our week to do that. And then look strategically into the next week and say, what are the five biggest things that I'm gonna achieve next week? And when am I going to achieve them? And plan those on your calendar. So. I also want to talk a little bit about, we're all living amidst crisis and we're managing that in as many different ways as there are fingerprints on the planet. So this is a, how, what, what my COVID schedule looks like. You'll notice it feels a little more full um, because I have strategic break moments in there. It's important. We typically get up and go to a meeting or we drive across town or we're commuting somewhere. And so those little moments disrupt the day and break it up. When we're home, we sit in our office or at our kitchen counter or dining room or 
you know, a little, a little card table that you've set up somewhere in your space and you're not really walking around all that much. So for me, I have a wonderful daughter and we have a family sink each morning. And that's just our time to say, here's what the day looks like, right? What assignments do you have that you need to complete today? Here's when mommy has meetings that cannot be interrupted. Here's when mommy has some meetings, it's okay, you can interrupt. Um, and so we frame out the day and then we frame out, she knows we're gonna have a check-in time right at that 10.30 mark. I've started to shorten my 10 o'clock meetings and say, you know, they're 45 minutes now instead of an hour. And I'll schedule that intentionally and be more efficient with that meeting agenda, manage it well. That way I have just a quick check-in, again, an opportunity to get up out of my seat, go do, I love to just kind of lunge, do a few lunges here and there around the day, throughout the day, um, lunges and squats to keep your body moving, maybe lift some weights, whatever it is you want to do to be active, but also just check in on the family. How are we doing, right? Make sure we're staying the course. Then noon, walk and work out. I do a bar workout every single day right now. Um, that's my personal challenge to myself, or get outside and walk. You could also water the plants. Just do something that is outside. Think of it as if you were downtown in an office, you'd be walking out to lunch with a colleague, or you might have an exercise routine, or if you're typically working from home, you now have a lot more at home than you're used to managing. And so you need to get out, right? And obviously be safe, practice physical distancing. I'm not saying go out and be crazy. I'm saying just get out of your house, maybe onto your patio, backyard, somewhere safe, but make sure that you're out of your workspace. Then you notice life kind of gets back to normal, work, 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 zoom, zoom, zoom through the day. And then I personally, I've been trying to schedule a bike ride sometime between one and four. And so that bike ride is just an awesome opportunity to get out, let the wind fly through our hair. My daughter and I will giggle. Sometimes we pedal and go all out. Just the physical release and creation of endorphins is really important. And then I've added something based on some feedback that I actually heard today, which is to disrupt the day. Normally we have some commute time to go and pick up our loved ones or to transition from work to our personal lives. And now they're all blurring, right? Our work and personal and professional lives are coming together. And so we have to disrupt that. Think about how Netflix disrupted Blockbuster or Uber and Lyft disrupted the taxi market, right? It, it shook the market. So you have to shake up your day and disrupt that moment in time, okay? So that you can then transition to your personal life after work. So with that, here's your personal challenge. Apply block scheduling to your upcoming week. So analyze your calendar, just like I modeled for you. Design it with the best execution strategy you possibly can. And watch yourself achieve more in even less time so that you can have greater joy. We are Building Brilliance. We're in this together. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you on Juice with Jay in the future.